recalls and records the last conversations that Jesus had with his disciples. And so when you look at John's Gospel, you'll find chapter 3 that we spoke about, chapter 4, chapter 8 about the blind man, chapter 9, all stories, incidents, um, events that took place, and conversations with people. But from chapter 13 to chapter 17, there's a change in John's Gospel. Then from chapter 18 is the crucifixion. <laughs> chapter 13 and 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 are called by the biblical scholars the farewell discourses. These are a gathering together of the conversations, the deep conversations Jesus had with his followers as he prepared them for his going away. The part that we've just read follows on John 13 where Jesus said to them very clearly, I'm going. And he said goodbye to them by washing their feet. And he told them, like, like you would, like daily you would tell your children if you go on a course to Cape Town, you greet them and say, my children, you must wash the dishes every night and you must just love each other. Don't you say there's something like that to them? Exactly. Now that's what Jesus says to his disciples. Now children, do what you need to do and make sure to love each other. So now they know he's serious. He's going. And they are starting to feel quite emotional about what's, what's happening. And so Jesus says to them, don't be troubled. Don't be worried. Don't be confused at the idea that I'm not going to be here anymore. I will help you. Things you will see Things will be okay. They were feeling very bereft, very grieved that they were no longer going to be with Jesus. I mean, their lives were changed. They, they were new people, traveling with him from town to town, healing, seeing firsthand the amazing things he did, hearing his parables, hearing his stories. And now, what would they go and do now? They would be lost without him. What would they go and do? Would they have bosses because their jobs back? They didn't know what the Holy Spirit had in store for them. For three years they'd been busy with him, an exciting, interesting life. And now, but now, so Jesus gives them a response that they can hold on to and that we can hold on to. He says to them, I am all thy direction. I am your meaning, I am your purpose. Or to word, use the words that Jesus himself used, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is what he gives them and us to hold on to in this life. It's one thing to find your way to Oshakati. There are maps, there are road signs, there are even satellite systems. More than that, if you've ever been there, who's been to Oshakati? Oh, well traveled congregation. I'm not yet, but I plan to go. <laughs> if you've been there, you'll more or less remember how to go to go back again. But life is not like that. Life is much more complicated. You've never been where you were today. You have no idea what next week will be. Or what next year will be. Whether it be the, the world politics, or whether it be your family circumstance, or your career, or whatever else, we encounter circumstances that we've never thought of before. How do we negotiate our way through a life that is unknown to us? You know, COVID has taught us quite a few things, and I think for many years to come we will still talk about COVID in one way or another. But one of the things that COVID has taught us is this. Actually, as human beings, we know very little. We know very little. What Jesus does when he speaks to the disciples and to us is he doesn't overwhelm them like, with a list of instructions or with abundance of information. You know, sometimes when you listen to these people giving their COVID reports 
on the different news programs. You get completely confused with all their graphs and all their numbers and all their percentages and all their R rates and all kinds of things. And by the end of the news broadcast, you know less than you did before. Jesus doesn't do that. He doesn't give us a whole overload of information. No, he says, you want to know how to get through this day, this week, this degree, this job? I am the way, he says. Jesus becomes your way. Instead of a GPS or a road sign, you will hear his voice in your heart, in your inner ear, saying, take courage, go this way, go this way. You're going to be all right. I'll be with you. One of the verses in the Old Testament that I so very much love is Isaiah chapter 30. Um, Philip, if you know your Bible, you might find Isaiah. No, you're not there. Sister Namate, if you know your Bible as well as Philip does, see if you can find it. Isaiah chapter 30. If you don't find it at the time, that's okay. So it's a bit of a long quote. Three verses. Isaiah 30, from verse 19 to 21. Isaiah says, People of Zion, the river Jerusalem, you will weep no more. How gracious he will be when you cry for help. As soon as he hears that God, of course, as soon as he hears, he will answer you. Although the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, your teachers will be hidden no more, and with your own eyes you will see them. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Follow. Go to verse 21 for us. You're in the right chapter. There we go. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in. Jesus makes it even more personal. It is not just the voice of God, but it is He Himself that is the way. As a follower of Jesus, our clearest instruction is to follow Him. Do what He does. Trust whom He trusts. Focus where He focuses. That's why we are called disciples. We are followers of Jesus. Oh, listen carefully to what I'm going to say now. I don't want you to get it wrong. Our faith goes even deeper than a book. Our faith goes even deeper than a book. Precious and beautiful and helpful as this book is. Our faith goes deeper because it builds on Jesus Christ himself. So the book helps us, but it's Jesus who we follow. He is our way. We live in complicated times. There's always two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. And because of social media and TV and many news channels, you will hear information about the same thing from two different perspectives. And you will think, now, who is right? NBC or C -C CNN? Um, BBC or Al Jazeera? My WhatsApp or my pastor? You, you sometimes get confused about where, where, where is the truth? Because we get information from so many different angles and we don't know which information is what we should, what we should, what we should uh, uh, trust. There's always another side of the story, and the digger you, the, the deeper you dig, the more confusing it can get. And so Jesus says to the disciples, and he says to us, you want to know the bottom line. You know, what you know, what is the truth behind the truth? Look at me. And so, beyond the shadow of a doubt, when you look at John 14, as just one snippet of the truth of Jesus. We know that the truth is you can trust Jesus. 
The truth is you can trust Jesus. The truth is there is a place for you in the Father's house. The truth is we have access to Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. The truth is if you know Jesus, you know the Father. There's no doubt about those things. And if those things are certain, what else do you need to worry about? In this world, people seek to find truth and meaning in so many things. They try and make their life worthwhile by trying to go into certain directions. There, there is for many people, um, and not only young people, I must say, a race after prestige and fame. Devices like Instagram really help a lot to drive people to want to be known, to want to be famous, to want to be seen, to want to have a million followers. But it, it's even in the movie industry, eh? it's even in politics. Now some people go into politics because they want to serve the nation. Some people want to go into politics because their names will get into the newspaper easy. People rush for prestige and for fame until you realize one day that many, many famous people's lives are empty, they are meaningless. And every now and again we hear of the death of a, of a famous person by tragedy. There's no deep truth in being famous. And then there are people who run after owning more things. How many handbags do you own, ladies? And how many more do you want? How many properties do you own? How many vehicles do you own? How many cell phones do you own? And there must be a certain brand. What do those things do for you? You know, there's the, there's the thing of wanting it. To want that new Gucci bag. Hey, oh man, I want it. Oh man, I want it. But once you got it, you got it. Then you start wanting the next thing again. We even run after progress. We want to get ahead. We want to get to the point that we are the richest person in the world, the most educated person in the country. And then you read about poor dear Mr. Bill Gates, who we all know so well. One of the richest men in the world. And just a little while ago, his wife divorces him. And his personal life crumbles. None of those things are the truth. None of those things are the ultimate truth when you get down to it. They make life easier. They make life more exciting for a while, but they don't satisfy your need to have a meaningful life. Our meaning. Now and eternity lies in Jesus. His truth holds us together. What makes sense of life is to know the author of this life, the one who started it all. What makes sense is to know the one who will complete this life and what's in his heart and mind. The deepest truth, what makes sense and what gives meaning to life is Jesus who holds it all together from beginning to end. He's the truth. Jesus is our way, he's our truth, but then he says also, he's our life. Now, life is not something one often thinks very much about. I mean, you breathe, your heart beats, and you're alive. But there's quality of life, and there's quality of life. And it's well worth thinking about what kind of life is Jesus for us. Jesus, in just the previous chapter, uh, chapter 10, which we will read on Friday, Jesus says in verse 10, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now, if Portuguese is your first language, maybe abundantly is not an easy word. Hmm? Let, me, let me just give you this little story. It's a little story preachers often tell. But just pretend you've never heard it. Um, there's a story about a couple who decided that they would go on a cruising holiday on a boat. And they saved up for quite a few years for themselves to get onto this boat 
to cruise from Volkers Bay to Cape Town. And they stayed for a long time. And it was a beautiful trip. And they would sit outside on the deck and they would watch the waves and the sea and the sky and the sunset. And then they would go inside to their cabin and they would go and have some snacks that they packed to bring with them to, the, to their cruise. And they had a few salty biscuits and a bit of biltong and a few sweeties that they packed and a few boxes of liquid fruit. Half their suitcase was food. And it was on the last day of the cruise when they had to fill in the evaluation questionnaire and it asked, how did you like the meals? And they went to the steward on the ship and they said, the meals? Yes, the steward said, the meals are free. They are included in the restaurant. You don't have to pay anything for them. The abundant life is to know that the meals are free. Everything included. Full. Rich. Whole. They thought they had to manage with a bare minimum because they didn't understand what was offered to them. And sometimes we contend with a bare minimum. We wake up, have our breakfast, work and go to sleep and we think that is life. Life is more than that. Life is about joy and peace and kindness and goodness. It is about prayer and joy and praise and fellowship. We have from Jesus an offer of abundant life. A life that is joyful and grateful and filled with grace and love. That is his life for us. His life is more. Life in Jesus is meaningful. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17 says, Whatever you do, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, giving him thanks to God the Father. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. Life is meant to be more than what you're busy with at the moment. It's more than giving injections and listening to patient stories. It is more than marking children's German essays. It is more than adding up the, your, your uh, sums to make sure that, those, that your finances uh, balance. It's more than trying to get information into students' heads. Your life is about the bigger picture. Even the smallest things we do, a kindness that nobody even notices, a sacrifice that you make in secret, a helping hand to the least and to the lowliest. You do know, hey, that it's Clarence's birthday. It is Clarence. Clarence's birthday is one of our co watches today. Bless him. Just a happy birthday when you go. Just the smallest kindness. Those are things that make life meaningful to you. It's not just about doing your job, not just doing the things you have to do. Life is abundant. It is meaningful. More than that, in Jesus, we have a forgiven life. You don't have to live under the burden of old sins that haunt you in the darkness of night. Your sins are forgiven and you can live being free from them. Ephesians 1 verse 7, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of His blood. You don't have to live burdened under your old sins. You have been set free by the grace of Jesus. An abundant life, a meaningful life, a forgiven life, and let me give you one more. Eternal life. Eternal life. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will not perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. John chapter 10. Wow. That is who he is for us. That is why we can sing through the darkest night. That is why we can face the fierce, fiercest storm. And that's why we can face the unknown from that day. Because he is our way. He is our truth. And he is our life. May God bless you as you continue to meditate on these words that our Lord Jesus gives to us. Let us just be silent for a moment as we each in our own heart offer our praise to God.
precious Lord. 